Dell E2 just got beaten. Google Brain just announced iMagin. Imagine. I mean, whatever. Imagine. It's a photorealistic text-to-image diffusion model, and according to human feedback test, Imagine has a higher rate of text alignments with the generated images than DAL E2. In this video, I'm going to show you what is Imagine or Imagine. The interesting thing about how it works, new examples generated by Imagine or Imagine, and how Imagine beats DAL E2 with the proof. In addition to that, I will show you the limitation of this model and the expected release date. Let's go. First, what is Imagine? Imagine, whatever. Here is the definition from Google research team themselves. It's a text to image diffusion model with an unprecedented degree of photorealism and a deep level of language understanding. In simple terms, it's an AI model that can take text as input and create images aligned with that text uniquely. But why do they create such like this model? We already have DAL E2. Well, they just want to pursue this text to image research further. But that's not the answer I see. The answer I'm seeing right now is this. I'm Google, I get involved with everything on Earth. Anyway, here are Imagine features. Here you can see category, description, and examples. These describe its ability to write in these categories. So for example, we have the colors. This means that the AI or Imagine has the ability to generate objects with specified colors. Example, a blue colored dog. So you will get a blue colored dog, okay? Then we have the counting, you, uh, the ability to count, to generate specified number of objects, uh, conflicting, ability to generate conflicting interactions between objects. And here you can see uh, misspellings. If you misspell uh, something like uh, refrigerator, for example, you can see that this is a misspelling of refrigerator. And you have the positional right here, ability to generate objects with specified spatial positioning. Rare words, ability to understand rare words like octothorpe. And the last one is the text, the ability to generate coded text inside the image with no mistake. Now you know it, so you need to see it. Let's move on to some examples generated by imaging. A chrome-plated cat sculpture placed on a Persian rug. A bucket bag made of blue suede. The bag is decorated with intricate golden paisley patterns. The handle of the bag is made of rubies and pearls. Vines in the shape of text imagine with flowers and butterflies bursting out of an old TV. A strawberry splashing in the coffee in a mug under the starry sky. A group of teddy bears in suit in a corporate office celebrating the birthday of their friend. There is a pizza cake on the desk. An angry dog doing heavy weightlifting at the gym. The Toronto skyline with Google Brain logo written in fireworks. A photo of a person with the head of a cow wearing a tuxedo and black bow tie. Beach wallpaper in the background. A bald eagle made of chocolate powder, mango, and whipped cream. Going to the most interesting part, how does Imagine work? This is interesting because it uses upscale models along with its base model for generating the final images, meaning the base model generates an image of 64 multiplied by 64 pixels. And then another model upscales that image by two times to become 256 multiplied by 256 pixels. And another super resolution model upscales it again two times to become 
1024 multiplied by 1024 pixels. All of that is done inside Imagine and without losing quality or losing any detail from the image. In fact, the fidelity of this model was way much better than Dell E2 according to Google official paper. Okay, now this is the moment everybody has been waiting for. How and why Imagine beats Dell E2? For this, there are the tests I've just showed you a few seconds ago where Imagine beats Dell E2. But we are not getting into that because you want to give the same input for both models and see by your eyes how Dell E2 is being beaten by Imagine. Okay then, here you go. A yellow book and a red vase. Notice that Imagine chooses the right colors while Dell E2 chooses the opposite ones. Next, a black apple and a green backpack. Also here we have the same case, but what if we give Dell E2 the opposite colors of what we want? In that case, I think we get the colors we need, right? I just turned on my brain and uh, it seems to solve this problem. But we need to give it a try to make sure that's true. Next, a panda making latte art. Notice that both are generating wrong samples, but Imagine has some good ones while Dell E2 has none. Next, we have a couple of glasses are sitting on a table. Dell E2 didn't know glasses from the context, but Imagine did. And the last big example is New York skyline with hello world written with fireworks on the sky. That's where Dell E2 failed badly and Imagine succeed well. Also this one, a storefront with text to image written on it. All of that is cool and this AI model is really great, but there is always the but part. By that I mean the limitations of Imagine. According to Google team, they are afraid of this model themselves. This is what they said. Generative methods like Imagine can be leveraged for malicious purposes, including harassment and misinformation spread, and raise many concerns regarding social and cultural exclusion and bias. Also, there is a bigger challenge Google is concerned about, which is the ethical one. All of these challenges should be nothing to Google, you know, because we are talking about a giant company, right? Therefore, when is the public release date of Imagine? The answer by Google themselves is, these considerations inform our decision to not release code or a public demo. This means that they are not even thinking of releasing this model until they solve the challenges. My comment on this, what a great AI that doesn't exist. So, instead of waiting for a major release, it's better to watch how AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, is being created and is about to change everything in the world of AI. That video is here. Thank you for watching.